Well, we're live. Give everybody an opportunity to sign on. and share as you're coming on and please say hey as you're signing on. I got a like and share myself. I have shared. I've shared. You have shared. I'm telling you, move this table. I'm causing the great earthquake of 2020. Better be quiet about that. We don't want to cause that to happen. So you're not tempted to touch the table. Oh, so I've got to sit here with my arms and my, my yeah, hands in my lap. Scoot back. Oh wow. Because anytime you put your Ted Jones says, what's up, what's up? I, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I am really red today. Look at me. Could you say I'm hot? I've been hot. We got some viewers. I can go ahead and get started unless you want me to give it another minute or so. Whatever you want to do. Ted, how have you been, sir? I haven't really talked to you in a little while. I heard someone that sounded like I heard a mimic. That's not good. Ashley, thanks for joining us. Please read the words. It says, let us know you're here. No lurkers. Because they're all over your face. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the progressive commercial. The logo's on my face, isn't it? Time for another newsletter. I'm going to take this off your face. All right. It's going okay. Good deal. Is it off my face? It's off your face. Well, see, I don't know yet because I've got a, a delay. Ashley says, okay, sorry I was creeping. <laughs> we like creepers. Yeah, creep. Man, so I creep. Anyway. So welcome to another monthly newsletter from Paranormal Health. It's, I'm Mike, and this is Leah. Say hi, Leah. Hi. We figured out how to master invisibility. Now, Leah's not feeling so well, so she's going to run behind the camera today. And I'm going to take care of stuff. I am a... Uh, the de definition of a sunburn. Yeah, uh, you see I'm red, but um, I don't even have an example of how red Leah is. Lobster is not the word. I'm pasty white anyway. So any sun exposure is terrible. Yeah, we spent the uh, the weekend up in Knoxville where Logan had a kicking camp where he did a really good job. Watched him kick uh, all the way from, what was it, Logan, the 40-yard line? 45. 45. He kicked from the 45 and made it. So, field goal. Fun fact, average uh, length of a field goal kicked by an NFL kicker is 35. And Logan beat it by 10 yards. So, oh. big time applause for oh, the man please, there. Make us some money. I know. Get some uh, hardcore sponsorship up in here. Let's get that contract signed. I know. <laughs> get him in the Packers and get some money rolling in.
So normally I start the uh, the live with a, a fun fact or uh, something like that. So yeah, I'm I'm waiting on Leah to come back in the room because she's really gonna love this. I can hear you. So this is August first, and I went to look to see what kind of you know if there was a special holiday for today, and there is. Today is National Mustard Day. Gross. Now I am more of a spicy brown kind of guy. Um, but, you know, whatever type of mustard you like. I've heard mustard's good for sunburns. So maybe you want to put some of this on your face. Negative. Okay. I've got the Barbasol shaving cream that I'm going to put on my face. Does that work? Yeah. Oh, I've never actually heard of that one It helps with the pain of sunburns. Well, guys, there's a tip for you. Barbasol shaving cream. Sean Adams says, what? what? Uh, Maybe he just had a stroke. <laughs> What's up, Shay Dog? How you been, man? I hadn't seen you in a while. How are things? How's life? Today's also National Girlfriend Day, for those of you that have girlfriends. Or, or wish you had one. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if you or maybe the one you have, you wish you didn't have. Right. Either way, celebrate it. This is also known as... Uh, this, this is the last one I'm going to share. It's also known as Dog, Dogust the First. It is, this is a day that is recognized by the kennel community as a, the birthday for kennel dogs. So Dogust First. I think it's a ploy just to come get more dogs out of the shelters. Gary Miller says, Ay. Ay. What's up, Gary? <laughs> Gary, I hear you're moving to Memphis. Hope you're packing. Hope you like barbecue. Hope you like barbecue and fireworks. Because Jerry, I think there's a Jerry the King Lawler fire, fire, fireworks stand up there. Make sure you go to the Peabody and watch <coughs> the ducks. I'd like to do that if it wasn't for the fact that Memphis is a five-hour drive from here. It's cool. You've done it. Yes, I have done it. And it takes all of like three minutes for a five-hour drive. So if you were going to watch ducks for three minutes on a five-hour drive... There you go. It's really cool. They um, they come out of they come from the pent or you know the top, the pit house or um, the roof rather, and they come all the way down the elevator, and they get off the elevator, and then there's a fountain in the lobby, and they come and just get into that fountain. They swim around a couple times, and they leave. But it's cute. Five-hour drive. But it was cute. It, it sounds cute. It sounds really, really it cute. It was on my checklist years and years and years ago. Yeah. All right, so we'll go ahead and get rolling with our uh, some of the stuff. Hopefully, we'll work this go around. We've uh, gotten some kinks Watch worked it. out. Got some kinks to work out, but things are looking good. Things are looking good her. so far. I ain't hating. So Leah and I, over the past uh, month, have had, taken an opportunity just to kind of do some mini road trips, uh, visiting some uh, locations uh, in and around uh, Tennessee area, uh, looking for um, just... Grub, ghosts, and... Gas. Gas. I'm the gas. <laughs> but no, we, um, we go... Um, gone to several different locations that have had uh, alleged haunted activity, paranormal activity, or local legends, stuff like that, and just tried to see what we could determine, uh, see what we could find. Um, most of these scout outs were during the daytime. Uh, we have uh, got some video footage. What? Nick wants to know if you're telling him that his live, that your live newsletter is kinky. Always. Can we get some theme music? Nope. Really? That's the one thing we're missing is theme music. That's after hours. Oh. It's not during this show. So that's the that's the late, late, late. Late show. Late show. All right. Anyway. Got to work out those kinks. <laughs> so, like I was saying, we've gone to a couple of different places and we've shot some footage. Um, the first video that we're hopefully going to be able to share here is um, we went down to... We actually, went up. Up. Excuse me. Yeah, both of our trips have been up. We went to uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, 
to a place that some people uh, that are watching may actually be familiar with this. Uh, it's the Craig Miles Mausoleum. Uh, it's in, I would say that's downtown Cleveland, would it not be? Yeah. It's a historic area. It's there near the uh, St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Well, it's in. It's in the, it's on the campus, I guess if that would be. It's in the yard. It. It's in the yard. It's in the backyard. But it's by near a lot of the Lee University buildings. Right. So if you get an opportunity to go up there, it's a really nice area. The church itself is beautiful. But this mausoleum is sitting in the back in the backyard, for better uh, all intents and purposes. And there is the story behind this mausoleum is that there was a little girl named Nina that back in the 1800s um, died in a carriage accident. Now we don't know the full details of the accident, just that she and someone else that was in the carriage with her died. Nina was eight or nine years old at the time. So her father commissioned this grand mausoleum made of marble, a um, specific type of marble. No, no, yeah. It is marble. It's a marble. It's marble. I thought you called it something else in the video. No, it's marble. Okay. Did I accidentally say quartz while we were yes. there? No, it's marble. Okay. So um, when he says quartz in the video, just to If it. I said quartz in the video, which I don't know. But it's a specific type of marble. Um, it, I can, it starts with a C. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, but it is a pure, very pure form of marble. It was exported here. And this grand, huge mausoleum was built for his little girl. And now there are, he and several other members of the family are also laid to rest there. The legend of the mausoleum is that it bleeds. Uh, there have been blood stains found on the mausoleum, on the walls, on several other places. And any attempts to remove said blood uh, results in the blood returning. So, we decided to go out there and check that out uh, just to see what we could see. And believe it or not, we actually saw the blood stains. So, I'm going to have Leah key the video up here. And there was another legend that we found out while we were on our way down there that we decided to test out. So, Leah, do you want to roll the clip? Sure. No clip. Oh, wow. Okay, well, let's skip on to the cemetery. Here we're on our rolling tour through the okay. Old Gray Cemetery. And actually, it is the... Um, It's a clip of where we're doing the drive. Well, what about the uh, the other clip? Will it play? But I've got it pointed that way. What? Stand by, guys. I'm so over this program. It's not even funny. It's playing right now. They can still hear us. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, go ahead and pause this because I was going to build up to this. Yeah, I mean, I have. Oh, it's, it's still playing. I keep forgetting there's a delay. Guys, I am so sorry. <laughs> My fault. So, anyway, when we went to the... Um, I guess we'll just have to uh, post the videos after the fact. Unless you want to try something different. Just talk. Okay. I'm working at some things. All right. So I apologize. It's kind of messed up my flow. I even, well, I mean, I even did a test, and it worked fine on my test. So I don't know. There's just, I guess, something about this house. Because <laughs> uh, at work when I test it, it does just fine. Who knows? So, so anyway, um, I'll just go back to the story on the mausoleum. So when we went to the mausoleum... And we'll post this video whenever, if she can get it running, great. If not, we'll make sure that it gets uh, it gets posted after the fact. But the mausoleum also has a 
story, and again, like I said, I had never heard of this. I've been to the mausoleum before, and this next go around when I was reading about it, I read this that said that evidently if you circle the mausoleum seven times and then head towards the front door of it, the doors will swing wide for you to enter. So we decided to test that out. I'm not going to tell you what happened because I want you to be able to see the video whenever it comes up. <laughs> Spoilers. I don't see anything as of yet. Okay, well, we'll see, because there's a delay. Leah's still trying to get that video up, so we're going to, if it happens to pop up over my face, great. I'm going to put my phone over here where I can actually check it as well. It's off over here. Nothing yet. Okay. So, the first thing that I will... I'm streaming on somebody's account. <laughs> yeah, it ain't, it ain't here yet. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to talk over the video when it starts playing because, uh, or talk too much because we're talking in the video. <laughs> oh, Ted, the, the name was Craig, Craig Miles. Um, I'm going to put it in the chat. Yeah, type it in. I'm assuming that they are, uh, uh, a fairly well-to-do or do what? Anything showing up? No. Okay. I'm assuming that they're uh, a fairly influential family that's in the Cleveland area, or that was, I don't know if they still are, in the Cleveland area because there's a couple of, there's another building or two that have the Craig Miles name in it. So, I don't know. No. So, the first time that, uh, that we went there, I checked out, you know, of course, the first thing I want to see is this blue Liam, <laughs> uh, you know, where and I was very surprised that the first thing I saw was when you walk up to the doorway of it, there is a big, huge red stain. I mean, it's almost a pinkish, reddish brown, if that makes any sense, which of course, you know, brings to mind blood. And you can see where it has been attemptedly removed, but the stain is still there. So I did some research on uh, marble. And it's and how it reacts, and because it made no sense where the where these blood stains would be were at, why would blood be coming from that particular part of the mausoleum? Now, as an investigator, it's my job, or I feel like it's part of my job to debunk, which is you know to rationalize. You know, some people see that, and the first thing they think is, oh, it's blood. I got a video playing. A video? Uh, did you post a picture? I did post a picture. Okay, all right. All right, guys, there's the mausoleum. <laughs> it may have been over my face for a couple of minutes because, again, there's a delay. But this is what the mausoleum looks like. It is made of marble. It's just, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful structure. Leah took several pictures all the way around it. But uh, this is the main shot. Uh, you're walking up into a courtyard. And if you look at the doorway up at the top right, uh, trying to look at the picture here myself, that column... Right there on the inside of that doorway is where that blood stain is. There's also one close to the steps. The picture has now changed on my end to from the gate. That's the entry gate as you're going in to see where the mausoleum is located. But I went back to the regular picture. Right. I did. Yeah. Just tell me when you're changing the pictures, since I can't tell. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. There's a delay. So. Whenever we, um, we went there, I did some research uh, about that particular type of marble. And again, I can't remember the exact name of it. I can look it up and I can share it. But it's a very pure form of marble. Well, even you know, a stone that pure, it can oxidize in the atmosphere. And when marble oxidizes, guess what color it turns? Red. So if you take into account, you know, air quality and how old this mausoleum is, which I don't write offhand, uh, you know, like I said, this was late 1800s, early 1900s. This mausoleum has been there for quite a while. So, you know, it's had time. There's a place on the left-hand side of it, actually, where it has a green mark 
going down the wall. Leah even pointed that out. She said, well, look, it's, it's bleeding green on this side. But it, all it is, is is oxidation from the atmosphere. Um, I hate to do any kind of debunking on something like that, especially when it's such a well-known legend in the area. However, you know, again, I'm not saying that there's nothing at that mausoleum. You know, we haven't tried any. We did try our uh, circling the building test, and whenever that video comes up, I'll let you guys see what what came of that. But as far as the mausoleum actually physically bleeding, it's not. It's just oxidation in the air uh, causing the marble to turn red. Whenever I had, we were there, I asked Leah if she felt anything. And I think you said that there was just nothing. Yeah. You would switch as I'm getting a drink of water. <laughs> oh, I didn't get a... Uh... I noticed that you were about to. Oh, I'm sorry, water break. I'll have a, a hand sign the next time I'm going to give water. So while we were, uh, let's see, whenever we were, out there, the cool thing about it, and I, I, I really want the video to play, is <laughs> whenever we were out there, it started to storm. It seems like the storms have been following us here lately because when we went to uh, Knoxville this past weekend, we checked out some some potential locations up there. And while we were there, we decided to visit a place called uh, the Gray Cemetery. Now, if you look it up online, you're gonna find two, excuse me, and they are called respectively the Old Gray Cemetery and the New Gray Cemetery. Real original, right? But we went to the Old Gray Cemetery first because the first person that was buried there was back in 1851. And we went there last night uh, right about what time do you think we went? It was around 6 or 7 o'clock, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. It was late in the evening. It was short, uh, shortly after we checked into our hotel, we decided to get out and about and look around. So when we got there, uh, there's two sections to the cemetery. There is a veterans section, and then there is the old cemetery itself. And when we got into the cemetery, it started to storm. And I'm talking like torrential downpour, lightning, thunder. Um, it was like, you know, we weren't supposed to be there. So we weren't able to get a lot of, we weren't able to get any footage shot, but we did um, drive around in it and look at everything. And then we decided to come back today and we shot some footage while we were in there today. Um, you said one of those videos, the... Uh you can talk. This is us just driving through it. Yeah, our rolling tour um, through the old gray cemetery. You can talk while oh, it's, this, it's this, playing now. The cemetery? Yeah. Now I'm talking during, we're talking on the video, so I don't want to Not while we're driving, really. Well, I mean, it wasn't anything significant. So, if you want to watch the video that she's playing right now, this is just a, the driving tour of the cemetery. It's really, really cool. What a obelisk. So you'll see in, of course, we're showing some of the um, headstones, and then there will be uh, some video of actual statues or headstones that have figures on the tops of them, which is very beautiful. The main reason we had decided to check this cemetery that out and the fact that oh, now up cool there is that was, the I saw a lot legend of when I was in has it that there is what is called a black aggie cool looking. that hangs out in the cemetery. Now in the other video that we shot, which we'll upload later, uh, me uh, explaining everything about the cemetery. Yeah. Am I talking over? Yeah, there's a road that goes up through there, but we're going to come. I'm gonna let the video play, guys. So, if you look up here, here's what he was talking about. Like, here's some of those angels that you see on top of the. Well, there may not be angels, but figures, regardless. There's some there's some Catholic saints out here. There's angels. Yeah. It's.
This is a receiving vault. I, for one, did not know what a receiving vault was when we got here, so I had to look it up. So this is a temporary tomb. So if you were to die during the winter time, they would put you in here. Just stack you up. Stack you in there until the <laughs> ground was no longer hard and frozen and they could put you in it. So there you go. Yeah. If you die at the start of winter, you're going to be here for a good long <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead and Show that. I don't know how well you will see it, but that's really neat. It is an angel figure in front of a cross. And then right, really cool. okay, right here in front of us, we've got another figure in front of a, looks like a lumber cross. It's like made out of trees. But I, yeah. can't, I can't tell from the back what it is yet. And I'm sorry, if I'm making anybody sick, I'm so sorry. I'm trying my best to keep things steady. That is an angel. A cherubim. go to the other side just to kind of get an all-around view and then we'll leave the rest of mystery for you to explore on your own if you're in the Knoxville area. One thing that is really really cool I don't if you're into those kind of things is there is a what kind of church? That's Lutheran. A Lutheran church that's across the street that um, I know you can't see it really well right now but the architecture is just um, beautiful. Yeah, it is a beautiful church, very beautiful, but it kind of reminds me of the, um, or if you want to go down here and then, you know, this will be on oh, the yeah, way we, out. Oh yeah, we got to let them see the fountain, which is not um, on. But. but anyway, it's very reminiscent of the church that's in the Annabelle movies. Just a little, I know it's not, but it, it's just reminiscent. It's pretty. So I'm going to go get the doll out of the trunk and we're getting out. showed you earlier when we had first come through yesterday evening <laughs> and the light shines on it from the headlights it'll kind of give you a double take like oh what's up but yeah there's several people out here touring and that's mainly what we do when it comes to cemeteries like this I mean I've investigated cemeteries in the past. You know what I found out? <laughs> oh, this is really neat. But this one's the one I said kind of reminded me of the Hobbit Hole because it's in the ground. It's in the hill. Sweet. Unless you have groups that come into cemeteries and come for up 
things, there's not a lot of activity. Where that comes from is back in the day before embalming was a thing. Um, if if a individual was no, you don't. I, mean, I know what. But anyway, if an individual had passed, and let's say that they were demonically possessed, okay, then um, when they die, of course, the demon cannot still possess the body because the soul is gone. Um, so they would stick around and hang around the where the body is buried, looking for another life or a live soul to uh, enter into. So that's where a lot of that came from. Um, but now since we're embalmed, there's not that blood and body the way that it was.